grapplers, the proverbial black sheep of fighting game archetypes, the classic character that is fun for no one and everybody hates to play against. Why would you ever play a big dumb elf grappler when you have much better characters to pick from? That's what I would say if I was an uneducated philistine that doesn't auto main the guy with a command grab. Grapplers are a polarizing archetype with extreme highs and lows, and when 360 subscribers looked like a possibility for this channel, I knew I wanted to make a video talking about the butter churning slot machines that I love so much. So, for the 360, uh, the 720, uh, the 1080 subscriber special, I'll be talking about some grapplers and why I, as a glue dining grappler enjoyer, love the archetype so much. Before we talk about other grapplers, we have to talk about the original. The Red Cyclone himself, Zangief. Zangief made waves with his initial appearance in Street Fighter 2. And by waves, I mean the ones he created by him flailing around as he drowned for being one of the worst characters in the game. Despite his flaws of being slow and having no way to deal with projectile spam and vulnerability to being lamed out, Zangief still is fun to play because all that challenge and strife you go to is rewarded with a fat spinning pile driver damage. He also caused the creation of the most fun input of all fighting games. The 360 input. There is just a sense of power in committing to going through every input direction for a special move. It creates a sort of connection between player and character, as you just input all the directions, and now they're gonna put all the damage, completely shatter your opponent's mental, raise your morale, and destroy any life lead your opponent had. And if they didn't have a life lead, well now they have a giant deficit to make up. Not to mention, I also adore Zangief's animation and character. Street Fighter V's rendition of the spinning power driver is probably my favorite meterless command grab animation of all time. The camera work really helps break the gameplay up and tells the grappler, Congratulations! You did it! You did the funny grab! You did it! You did the funny grab! Smash works in a weird way where the normal tells of a grappler doesn't really exist. I have heard a bit of discussion saying that Ganon is the closest to a grappler because he has two command grabs, or that it's Donkey Kong because he has a game plan based around his cargo throw. As a grappler main coming to Smash, to me it's clear that Bowser is the only traditional fighting game grappler in Smash. This is all because of one move, Flying Slam. When you look at all the command grabs in Smash, you can see two distinct patterns. They all have horrendous long startups and the ones that belong to you. Grapplers invoke more of the less interesting agility grappler variants of grappler with their movement utility. All command grabs except for Bowser's flying slam. Flying slam truly feels like an SPD as it covers the same use cases of when a big heavy grappler would use their SPD. Potemkin is the most enjoyable grappler to watch. The perfect storm of Guilty Gear's misleading health gauges and Poe's giant damage really fits in well with what a Soku player once told me about grapplers. It's like playing a rock, paper, scissors, first to ten, but a grappler player only has to win three times. And I mean, look at that damage! No meter, three grabs, and Kai's dead! It doesn't help the opponent's mental that looks like Poe's doing way more damage than he actually is, like this damage, half of her health. That's not really half, but the moment it sure looks like it, and it feels like you lost half your health to a meterless throw. But for me, it's really helpful, because it looks like I just did half of their HP with a meterless special. And this is not even mentioning how Post Kara cancel into Potemkin Buster is amazing, and adds way more depth to the grab game than if they gave him a garbage slow running grab like Zangief. More than anything, Pote exemplifies the high damage aspect of grapplers to their logical extreme. Maybe too extreme, because even though I love it, 3 meterless grabs might be a bit insane for a kill. The next grappler that I want to talk about is probably one of the most overpowered grapplers in all of fighting game history. If he was adapted into any fighting game, he would be a top tier, a completely broken mess as he denies all the weakness that a grappler normally has and keeping all the strengths. You've seen him throughout the video. Our favorite giant, Kokorn from Ultra Fight Die Kianta 2. Like, look at his fastest butt. A one frame disjointed low? How can characters from other games compete? I'd like to see someone be faster than the one frame button on the slow character. You need to cross the screen? Boom, he's got a Vega Claw. Disgusting powerful grabs? He's got that down. Grapplers and Kianta have extra damage on the grabs, on top of the command grab options, and Kokorn's universal grab does 60 damage. That's one half of a trio character's health. Imagine, two mistakes is all you need to lose one of your characters at no cost of Kokorn whatsoever. 
And if Corcoran has meter, say goodbye to your trio character as his ultra grab does 125 damage. I talked about how impactful it was that it looks like Pope was doing half his opponent's health in one grab. But my man, motherfucking Kokorn, can one-shot almost all the cast in the right scenario. Kokorn just feels disgusting, but he's just so fun to play due to how absurd he is. Okay, but I know what you're thinking if you made it this far. Where's the rant? Alice Senki 2 is a doujin fighting game released in 2008 that's a crossover fighting game featuring characters from various Alice Soft titles. I really wish I could say more, but the game's not translated and like literally nobody plays it. The grappler of this game is Rant's villain turned duragonist Patton Misnarge. This man can delete half your health bar with one meter in a game where you get meters often. But the real reason why I'm talking about a dead obscure game where I probably make up 10% of the player base is so I could talk about Rant's lore. You see, Patton Misners was first introduced in 1991 as the pr- Oh, would you look at that? Man, we're out of time. Damn, I bet that was really interesting. More videos coming soon, but just don't expect them next week and maybe the week after as I'm going on a family vacation. Bro, fuck grapplers. Grapplers are actually the fucking worst. I win neutral the whole fucking game. You make three guesses and I fucking lose. This bullshit. I hate it. Uh, quickly, top- Five grapplers, uh, Rock Howard, Yu Narakami, Base Goku, Soul Bad Guy, Naoto Kurigane, fuck grapplers, I hate all of you.